family. Hope you're well and it's good to, to be together even if, even if it is by uh, live stream for a while longer. We're hoping that we're inching toward uh, um, regular live. Actually getting to be together, we think we are inching toward that. We hope uh, here in a couple weeks maybe to do a little bit of a different thing in the parking lot outside of our cars, sitting in chairs. Um, we'll let you know more about that and, and let you know more about resumption of services in the building when that's going to be. Um, but uh, here in a couple of weeks, maybe we can um, be outside of our cars and, and enjoy that. And, uh, and so we'll be praying for good weather. Uh, if we were do, trying to do that today, it would be uh, a bit cold and windy, I think. Uh, but there are several at, here at the park and park and praise today and uh, several watching from home i'm sure so um, we we hope this is a blessing to you um, let's pray together as we begin holy god we praise you today thank you for this day that you've given us of life and this day which belongs to you uh, may we remember you and your son and your great works for us and and May we give honor to whom honor is due today, uh, not only you as our God, but those who gave us life. Um, thank you for your love. Thank you for our mothers and all you have done to bless us through them. Help us to focus on some truths now from your word and um, things that we've experienced in life with, with those who have been so precious to us. Please continue to bless us with health, protect us from the evil one, and we ask that you hasten the time when we can get back to being together and serving in normal ways. Thank you for your love in Christ Jesus, we pray in his name. Amen. Well, this is for all the mothers. This is for all the mothers who have sat up all night with sick toddlers in their arms, wiping up vomit laced with Oscar Mayer wieners and cherry Kool-Aid, saying, it's okay, honey, mommy's here. 
This is for all the mothers who walk around the house all night with their babies when they keep crying and won't stop. This is for all the mothers who show up at work with spit up in their hair and milk stains on their shirts and diapers in their purses. This is for all the mothers who run carpools and make cookies and sew Halloween costumes. This is for the mothers who gave birth to babies they'll never see and the mothers who took those babies and gave them homes. This is for all the mothers who froze their backsides off on metal bleachers at football or soccer games on Friday night instead of watching from cars so that when their kids ask, did you see me, they can say, of course, I wouldn't have missed it for the world and meant it. This is for all the mothers who yell at their kid in the grocery store and swat them in despair when they stomp their feet like a tired two-year-old who wants ice cream before dinner. This is for all the mothers who re read uh, Good Night Moon twice a night for a year and then read it again just one more time. This is for all the mothers who taught their children to tie their shoelaces before they started school and for all the mothers who opted for Velcro instead. This is for all the mothers who teach their sons to cook and their daughters to sink a jump shot. This is for all the mothers whose heads turn automatically when a little voice calls mom in a crowd even though they know that their own offspring are at home. This is for all the mothers who sent their kids to school with stomach aches, assuring them they'd be fine once they got there, only to get calls from the school nurse an hour later asking them to please pick them up right away. This is for mothers whose, whose children have gone astray and who can't find the words to reach them. It's for all the mothers who bite their lips sometimes until they bleed when their 14-year-olds dye their hair purple. What makes a good mother anyway? Is it patience? Compassion? The ability to, to nurse a baby? Cook dinner? Sew a button on a shirt? All at the same time? Or is it heart? Is it the ache you feel when you watch your son or daughter disappear down the street, walking to school alone for the very first time? Is it the jolt that, that takes you from sleep to dread, from, from bed to the crib at 2 a.m. to put your hand on the back of a sleeping baby? Is it the need to flee? from wherever you are and hug your child when you hear news of a fire or a car accident or a child in danger. And this is for mothers who put pinwheels and teddy bears on their children's graves. This is for young mothers stumbling through diaper changes and sleep deprivation and it's for mature mothers learning to let go. It's for working mothers and stay-at-home mothers, single mothers and married mothers, mothers with money and mothers without. This is for you all. Hang in there and happy Mother's Day. The Bible tells us to honor those who deserve to be honored. And so we honor God and, and our Savior above all else today, but we pause for a few moments as well to honor good mothers. They are worthy. 
like to study with you for a moment today from Genesis chapter 3. I want you to think with me for a few moments about Eve. Genesis 3 verse 20 says, The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now this verse, of course, comes at the close of a sad chapter in human history. Adam and Eve have sinned. Remember the temptation of the serpent, and, and they have succumbed to it, and as a result, they are receiving punishment. They're about to be banished from their garden paradise, and their innocence has been stripped away. Life is about to change forever for them. They're about to experience what it really means to be mortal for the first time. But right in the midst of this, all this sadness, you have this hopeful note about Eve. She's given her name, and it is the perfect name. Her name means life. Adam names his wife life because she would be the mother of all those who have life. And so what a perfect name for a mother. Life. And I want us to reflect on that idea for our lesson. I want us to consider why that is a perfect name for a mother. A mother is truly life because she grants physical life to her children. Now, this is, of course, what we naturally think of when we consider motherhood. And if you look at Genesis 4, Eve, again, which means life, begins to bring children into the world with Adam. First there's Cain, then Abel, and, and later on Seth. They owed their lives to their mother. And the same is true for each one of us. If for nothing else, we can be thankful to our mothers today for the wonderful gift of life. Uh, they carried us for nine months. They put up with us. Uh, they put up with all the discomfort and pain that we caused them at that time. Uh, they didn't dispose of us. They granted us life physical life. But of course, that's not the only reason. And it's, it's not the only reason that Eve's name is so perfect for a mother, because a mother is also truly life because she blesses her husband and blesses him with completeness. Again, we're studying this in context of Genesis. Remember, what happened in the garden as Adam searched for a companion among all the creation. He, he didn't find much as far as a companion. Uh, he named a lot of animals, but he didn't find any that he wanted to set up house with. And then God made Eve life. And he brought her to Adam, and suddenly Adam was complete. It's back in chapter 2, verse 23, when Adam first sees Eve, and he says, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. It sounds so formal, you know. Uh, to me, it's just the Bible way of saying, All right! Um, Adam loved what God brought him. Then verse 24 tells us, and, and this is quoted later in the Bible, it's quoted by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, it says that this is why a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So the woman gives the man something that mom and dad cannot and it, it involves so much more than just a physical relationship. She completes him, you see. He's not whole without her. 
Before Eve showed up, Adam was alone. Genesis 2, verse 18. And it wasn't good. After she came along, he was whole. There's an old Saturday Evening Post cartoon. Now, you younger folk will have to probably Google what Saturday Evening Post was, but there was an old cartoon in that publication that showed a young boy, he's about five or six years old, he's talking on the telephone, and he's saying this, he's saying, Mom's in the hospital, the twins and Roxy and Billy and Sally and the dog and me and Dad are all home alone. Yes, it's true. Without Mom, we're all home alone. But also today, think of the fact that a mother is truly life because she's the great nurturer of the home. By nature, by creation, she is a nurturer. Eve was certainly a nurturer. Uh, she must have been devastated when one of her children, Cain, murdered another of her children, Abel. I, I can't even imagine that scenario and, and how a mother would respond. But rest assured, Eve was the was there to nurture. Um, we know that she raised up another child, a son, once again, Seth. And if you look at what happens at the end of chapter 4, verses 25 and 26, notice what it says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, and called his name Seth, for she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and, and he called his name Enosh. At that time people began to call upon the name of the Lord. What do we get from that? Well, you see, only a mother could go through a tragedy like that and still be able to raise a child in a caring, nurturing, spiritual way, in a way that would lead his family to become worshipers of the Lord. It was through the line of Seth, you see, that people began to call on the name of the Lord, that is, worship the Lord. And, and then that leads us to one more reason that Eve, Eve's name is just so perfect and that is because she fosters spiritual life in her children. You know, the gift of physical life is amazing, it's important. Uh, we've been thinking a lot about it throughout this crisis, haven't we? Protecting physical life and that kind of thing. But Physical life ultimately is worthless without the spiritual. And Eve helped lead Seth into a strong life in the spirit such that his offspring would then continue to call upon the Lord, worship the Lord. One of the best places to learn the nature of God is from a godly mother. A good mother that models selfless, giving, sacrificial, agape love, the love of God. Um, she can do it like no one else can. And when you've experienced that, when you've received that kind of love from a mother, you're certainly given a big spiritual boost in your search for God. A mother is life. Ultimately, because she points her home in the direction of eternal life, the life of the Spirit, the life of God. Doesn't mean they'll always follow that path, but she points them in that path and she models it. So mothers, today uh, we say thank you 
thank you for being life to us in all these ways. And please, please keep up the good work. I want to close with something that I think is special today. It's entitled, How Moms Were Made. It's a bit of a parable. By the time the Lord made mothers, he was in to the sixth day, working overtime. An angel appeared and said, Why are you spending so much time on this one? And the Lord answered and said, Have you read the spec sheet on her? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. She has to have 200 movable parts, all replaceable. She has to run on black coffee and leftovers. Have a lap that can hold three children at one time and that disappears when she stands up. Have a kiss that can cure anything from a scraped knee to a broken heart. And have six pairs of hands. The angel was astounded at the requirements for this one. Six pairs of hands? No way, said the angel. The Lord replied, oh, it's not the hands that are the problem. It's the three pairs of eyes that mothers must have. And that's on the standard model, the angel asked. The Lord nodded in agreement. Yep, one pair of eyes are to see through the closed door as she asks the children what they're doing even though she already knows. Another pair in the back of the head are to see what she needs to know even though no one thinks she can. And the third pair are here in the front of her head. They're looking for an errant child and saying that she understands and loves him or her without even saying a single word. The angel tried to stop the Lord. This is too much work for one day. Wait until tomorrow to finish. But I can't, the Lord protested. I am so close to finishing this creation that is so close to my own heart. She already heals herself when she's sick and can feed a family of six on a pound of hamburger and can get a nine-year-old to stand in the shower. The angel moved closer and touched the woman. But you have made her so soft, Lord. She is soft, the Lord agreed, but I've also made her tough. You have no idea what she can endure or accomplish. Will she be able to think? asked the angel. The Lord replied, not only will she be able to think, she will be able to reason and negotiate. The angel then noticed something and reached out and teach, touched the woman's cheek. Oops, it looks like you have a leak with this model. I told you you were trying to put too much into this one. That's not a leak, the Lord objected. That's a tear. What's the tear for, asked the angel. The Lord said, the tear is her way of expressing her joy, her sorrow, her disappointment, her pain, her loneliness, her grief, and her pride. The angel was impressed. You are a genius, Lord. You thought of everything for this one. You even created the tear. The Lord looked at the angel, smiled, and said, I'm afraid you're wrong again, my friend. I made the woman, but she made the tear. Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. And thank you for loving us and teaching us about God. Hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you.